So I'll be speaking on Optos White Field Imaging and the Disha Eye Hospital experience. I have no relevant financial interest in this. So uh, to begin with, what is ultra wide field retinal imaging? Ultra wide field describes retinal imaging into the far periphery in a single capture. It is as simple as that. So ultra wide field retinal imaging, actually the International Wide Field Imaging Study Group defined what is actually uh, uh, retinal imaging and they defined posterior pole imaging as area of the retina within the major vascular arcades and just beyond. White field was described as centered on the fovea, imaging retina in all four quadrants, posterior to and including the vortex vein ampullae, and ultra white field where images showing retinal anatomy anterior to the vortex vein ampulla in all four quadrants. We at Disha, because of uh, our, our chairman sir, who actually had the foresight of you know getting the 200 TX way back in 200, 2012, and, and nobody else probably in India had it. So we have been fortunate to uh, have, of course, the fundus camera, the basic fundus camera. We use the Claris, and this is an auto montage with the Claris. This is a wide field auto montage with the Claris, and of course, we have the Optos. So all these three images are incidentally from the same patient, and you can uh, just uh, summarize to uh, you know tell that uh, well the images tell it all. So this is the ultra wide field image that is possible with the Optos. So uh, like uh, uh, my chairman mentioned, uh, we had one Optos in uh, 2012, and uh, so we have uh, six Daytonas, additional Daytonas now. And of course, the Optos is capable of, of, the, uh, of the FA, the ICG, and uh, the fundus uh, photo, of course, and, and of course, the autofluorescence. So with 200 TX, autofluorescence, and FA, and, auto, and uh, the basic uh, ultra-wide field uh, fundus imaging is possible. And with the Daytona, the ultra wide field uh, fundus imaging and the autofluorescence is possible. So basically we use these two machines. So uh, why Optos? Well, because it is the only single capture 200 degree ultra wide field image uh, of the retina that's possible uh, in today's world. Uh, this is the only machine that, you know, with which you can have a 200 degree wide field, ultra wide field image of the retina. And the images can be taken through most uh, of the cataracts and vitreous opacities as uh, I will be showing. And of course, you can use a non-midriatic, uh, you know, uh, state to take the images. Uh, it is fast, comfortable, and convenient for all patients, and has multiple imaging modalities. And of course, it, uh, this is very good for documentation, for patient uh, information, and uh, also for you know prognosticating your diseases. So, like uh, has already been mentioned, uh, it uses a patented virtual point technology, which allows the Optos system to produce a single capture ultra wide field image. And uh, this virtual point is, is actually placed behind, somewhere behind the iris plane. And uh, this creates a large scanning angle through which you know these images uh, can be taken from inside the eye, basically. Of course, it uses uh, three lasers, the blue, green, and the red. The blue is actually the one that uses, uh, that is used for the surface uh, captures. But uh, what here about the green and the red lasers? Well, because uh, uh, this is something that, that's interesting and I'll be showing uh, subsequently. And uh, these three together, the Optos uses this three in one color depth imaging. So you can actually you know, capture a fundus uh, like this, a basic uh, normal color fundus, so to say, in a normal uh, person who's just coming for a screening, or it could be something a little more uh, serious with this uh, lattice. Uh, uh, it's an early lattice that is seen in the superotemporal periphery here. And of course, it could be something a little more concerning, a uh, break here in the supratemporal quadrant, something a little more ominous, a large break with a total retinal detachment, which needs immediate attention. And of course, uh, the one very important thing that's uh, there about the Optos is that, you know, every point is basically in focus. This is uh, actually a spontaneously reattached retinal detachment, and you can see a macular hole bang in the center. So uh, if you notice, the entire image is in focus. So that's one of the specialities of the Optos. Well, you can uh, image, uh, like uh, my chairman showed, you can image a rabbit's retina. So a child is basically child's play, imaging a ch child's retina is basically child's play for the Optos. And you can see this large retinoblastoma, which is uh, not uh, very fortunate for this child, but it was uh, picked up uh, very early on in the child's uh, uh, you know, life. 
And of course, here you can see another lesion here. So it's, it's a tool with which you can image children also. Now, uh, going back to this uh, green and red lasers, well, you can see a nevus here. So with the red laser, which, which uh, you know, uh, captures the choroid basically. So you can see the nevus clearly and with the, with the green laser, it is missing here. So therein lies the utility of the green laser and the red laser. And going back to our uh, simple lattice here, you can see the red laser has not really picked it up, whereas the green laser has picked it up. So you can actually utilize these uh, to actually locate uh, or find out your area of interest. Now you can also have these asteroids, which are so often in, in uh, while we notice uh, them so often in retinal examination, and you can play around with these, uh, you know, blue, green, and uh, red uh, lasers, and you can actually get an image and get to know what the retina is uh, like. Now uh, let's look at this patient. This is a young child with a uh, corneal opacity, having a cataract, which is partly subluxated. And uh, so you can you can see this is this is a retinal detachment, uh, and this is in fact a printout from a printout of the optos that I have. I'm showing this just to show that even the printouts with the printouts also you can kind of uh, you know clearly vis visualize what's going on. And this is of course post surgery when of course the cataract was taken care of, so the image is much much better here. You can image uh, peripheral retina, you can image peripheral lesions, and with the Optos FA, this becomes even more uh, better, and you can uh, know the ex uh, complete extent of the disease, and of course, the feeder vessels uh, are made visible, and you can plan your treatment. The Optomat map FA or the Optos FA actually has a resolution of 14 microns, and uh, you can magnify any area of interest to find out what's going on. Now, uh, uh, showing you just a couple of practical uses of the ultra wide field FA. So this is a 55 year old lady with re recalcitrant diabetic macular edema after umpteen number of injections. So when she presented to me, actually I thought uh, that there could be some peripheral ischemia. So we did this uh, optos imaging and actually we could find out uh, plenty of areas of peripheral ischemia which had not been well covered with the laser. And so we did laser and in two months time, she did better without any more injections. So actually uh, this uh, is an important area which we have to look into. Of course, uh, Dobra sir will be speaking on uh, uh, uveitis and uh, of course you can image vasculitis with the optos. And uh, uh, going back to the retina, uh, this is a VR view and you can actually see how much of a, uh, um, ischemia is there and whether to do laser or not, or whether to let it go, you can decide with this uh, Optos images. So everybody likes to have a good view, uh, uh, but this view is definitely better than the one previously uh, shown. So it's the same for the retina. Let's look at this. This is an 80 year old uh, gentleman with sudden decrease of vision. The visual equity was hand movement. And this is what uh, our conventional uh, fundus camera would show us. But actually, if you look at the optos, the whole story is actually uh, in front of you. So we have a very, very large subretinal uh, hemorrhage and of course, exudative retinal detachment. And all this was captured with, through this small pupil. This is the intraoperative actually uh, capture of the pupillary size. And this is uh, something that we did this, this Monday itself. And uh, through this small pupil also, you can get a picture like this. So of course we remove the subretinal uh, blood from this uh, through a temporal retinotomy and we realized that there was a large RP rape. And uh, then this is day one post-op. This is on this Tuesday, last Tuesday, we could uh, capture this large uh, you know, RP rape that was uh, possible to uh, uh, see with this um, autofluorescence, ultra white field autofluorescence with the optos. So this was on day one. So basically the ultra wide field autofluorescence captures the retina using fundus autofluorescence and green laser of 532 nanometers. And what's interesting is that uh, when you do a autofluorescence, both the color and the autofluorescence image can be you know, carried out in one exam itself. So here is an example. This is the color image and this is uh, the baseline image and uh, this patient has developed a RP rip and we can follow it up. So uh, of course, uh, this uh, can be used in uveitis cases. I won't go in really into uveitis and you can uh, uh, zoom them up and uh, see your area of interest. And of course you can document patients with retinitis pigmentosa, et cetera, and know the full extent of the disease. 
it's a wonderful tool for documentation and when we've published a few of these uh, interesting pictures this is a toxocara granuloma with uh, a larger retinal break here and a total retinal detachment that was noted on optos examination and this is a bilateral congenital retinal fold and as you can see right from the disc to the temporal periphery in both these eyes uh, the right and the left you can uh, note that the congenital retinal fold is uh, visible it's in focus and even the other parts of the retina are in focus uh, with the, with the optos image we also recorded this uh, uh, scleral fistula in a aborted bridge coloboma and we published it in the indian, indian journal of ophthalmology recently and uh, this is one of the few uh, uh, documents that we have about scleral fistula and uh, of course the optos captured it all it's very important to you know have a proper you know uh, tool to examine the patients and explain to the patient what's happening because this is a patient this is a physician who presented to me having undergone a, a vr surgery elsewhere in a diabetic uh, you know vitreous hemorrhage and as you can see in this picture there's uh, silicon oil uh, in the eye and there's a large uh, tractional retinal detachment with this uh, you know attraction here so we operated on him released the traction and uh, post operatively we could show him that the traction was gone and the retina was settled so we also published this in this in the indian journal of ophthalmology and it's very important to actually document what's happening and what you've done to the patient then we have a lot of skeptics uh, coming to us uh, for example all of us have these uh, uh, patients uh, both male and females uh, with floaters and uh, you can just uh, you know show them this uh, fundus image or with the optos and tell that everything is okay and they did not worry but then we have also other patients who do not believe that they have a problem let's take this gentleman for for example this is a 35 year old with flashes having 6x vision wouldn't believe that he had something serious but when the optos was done he realized that of course indeed there was something serious there was this subclinical rd with numerous breaks which needed immediate treatment so there are a lot of patients who come to me uh, say asking whether my laser has been done all right so the optos you know says it all and you can tell and uh, save a colleague from you know uh, uh, other uh, issues and say, showing that the laser has been done all right so this is a 80 year old uh, with sudden loss of vision and with a history of blunt trauma and we could you know show him this iul that had dropped inside the uh, you know vitreous cavity and was lying on the retina and that uh, we could explain to him what uh, made him lose his vision there was this 70 year one year old uh, you know gentleman post ozodex who noticed a black shadow and he came running to us and we could show him the ozodex right in the inferior periphery and uh, he was you know kind of satisfied and he understood that this was not something very serious the optomap icg like i mentioned we don't have uh, the california which actually has uh, facilities for optomap icg but uh, this also is a wonderful tool and surely we'll be using it shortly and uh, it can image right up to the periphery and all four vortex ampullae can be seen and uh, this has been also been noted by the international white field imaging study group so uh, uh, these are uh, images through the california and uh, of course uh, it has uh, uses in amd vkh and other diseases and to conclude optos is a useful imaging modality with uh, which is uh, which uh, could be utilized in various retinal diseases and of, of course in uveitis also and it obviates the need for contact lens uh, pupillary dilatation is not really always essential the imaging is fast it offers high resolution and allows the almost the entire retina to be in focus but the problems are the initial cost and often you have this eyelash artifacts and ora to ora imaging in all quadrants is still still not possible in one go so i'd like to thank you all and acknowledge my team at retinal uh, department dishai hospitals thank you all it was an excellent presentation